on YouTube, Marvin out here once again. I hope you're enjoying your day. Today we have an awesome episode for you all. Today we're gonna be cooking something very delicious. One of my favorite fish to catch and you have it right, you got it right. It is alligator gar, katan. We're gonna be cooking some katan for you all. I've had a lot of messages of people say, okay Mark, you're showing us how to catch it, but show us how to cook it. So that's what we're doing in this episode. So I hope you're excited. I hope you learned something that you're gonna enjoy doing. I, I, I really um, enjoy cooking this, this fish. I respect it so much. We catch it and we cook it and we enjoy it. It's a delicacy for us. It's a very delicious fish. Some people don't like it, but it's because they haven't tried it or they have not tried it cooked the right way. We're going to cook it the right way for y'all today. Okay, right, everyone. so we are getting started, but before we continue on, I wanna give a big and special shout out to DWI expert, Rene A. Flores. Feel free to reach out to him for all your legal needs. Okay, everybody, so it's time. I'm gonna show you the ingredients that we're gonna be using today. I'm gonna show you the steps that we're going to take and the final dish, okay? So, we're gonna start off with our alligator gar, our katan. This is nothing but meat. This is all boneless, deboned. This is what you consider fillet fish. This is fillet alligator gar, and we caught it fresh yesterday. This is what we're gonna use, everyone, okay? So that's the, that's the fish we're gonna use. You, you can use any fish you like, but today's video is cooking alligator gar, okay? So this is how we're going to cook and prepare alligator gar. Or this is how we're going to prepare and cook alligator gar. So our next ingredients is going to be our um, seafood breading mix. There's two options you can go. You can buy your own um, breading mix that is already ready and instant. So all you do is just um, pour it in a, in, in a bowl, in a bag, you put your filet, you mix it up and you coat your alligator gar, okay? For example, this is one way you can go. This is this is already prepared and it's ready to go. It's instant. There's several brands out there. Nothing specifically is, is uh, something of my interest, but you can try them out and see which brand, which type is your favorite kind. So that is your breading mix if you don't want to get into making your own seafood breading mix. Personally, I like, I like to make my own breading mix because I like to add my own seasonings, my own spices and whatnot to my likings. So our first ingredient for our breading mix is going to be flour. That is going to be our first um, ingredient. Now, our second ingredient is gonna be black pepper, ground black pepper. Our third ingredient is gonna be oregano. It's gonna be oregano, okay? This is just gonna give it a little herbiness, um, herbal to it, so it's gonna, it's gonna make the, the breading mix delicious. Our other ingredient is this awesome spice that I buy. I think I buy it at Ross. It's called rosemary garlic, rosemary and sea salt. So this spice right here is delicious because it has garlic, it has ro rosemary, and it has sea salt. So it's very good. I, I very much um, suggest you try. If you don't wanna use this, just use your salt and your pepper and your garlic powder if you don't want to use this, okay? Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of ground paprika. The ground paprika is gonna be for the coloration. We want a, a nice little um, golden brown, reddish color to our fried fish. Our other ingredient is our crushed red pepper. Now, I will not add this in the video, but I do add it separately. I mix, I, I, I um, split up the, the breading batch that I make the mix, I spread it up in half, and I'm gonna add some of this to one half. Reason is because I have a eight year old that does not um, like too much spicy food. So she's not going to eat the, the fish with this. But us adults, we love it. We love a little kick to it, a little spice. We're gonna add it to our seafood breading mix. And finally, our sea salt. I know we're already adding this and it has sea salt, but you know, it might need a little more extra salt. So we're gonna add salt. So those are our ingredients. Now let's proceed to the preparation of getting our alligator gar ready to fry. All right, so we're gonna start by making our breading mix, our homemade seafood breading mix. So like I said, we're gonna be using flour. I'm gonna add about two cups of flour. It's gonna be about two cups of flour. There's one cup, there's two cups. 
kind of went over, but it's okay. A little bit over is not is not bad at all. It's a little, it's flour, so it's good, everyone. Okay, so we are going to go to our paprika. Our paprika, we want to use at least one, two tablespoons of paprika. Okay, now we're going to use our oregano, or we are going to add our oregano, as I should say. We're gonna use one teaspoon of oregano. That's it, just one teaspoon. Now, I'm putting a little bit over the teaspoon. So, just to let you all know if you saw a little bit over, that's what we're using. Now, our rosemary, um, our rosemary garlic sea salt, this is gonna give it that rosemary flavor, that rose, that um, garlic flavor. This is how much we're going to add. So, we're using teaspoons, all right? One teaspoon, two teaspoons, three teaspoons, four teaspoons, because this is gonna be our main flavor right here. So we're using four teaspoons. Now, our ground pepper, we don't want it too peppery, so just one teaspoon will do. And I didn't even put it, uh, fill it up all the way. One teaspoon will do, and there it is. Now on your salt, you wanna add as desired. If you don't want it too salty, don't add much salt. So we're gonna, we're gonna use probably about one teaspoon, two teaspoons of salt. It's a little less than two teaspoons, all right? So we have all of our ingredients in here for our seafood breading mix. Let me go ahead and grab something to mix it with. You can use whatever to mix it with, but I'm gonna use this so it can uh, so it can mix it up nice, and all those seasonings and everything can go through the, the whisk, and everything can mix up pretty nice. So basically, you want to distribute distribute all your seasoning and your spices and everything evenly, so every single piece of your alligator guard coating will be the same. So we're mixing it, we're mixing it, and that's it. Your mix is ready. Now, our next step is going to be slicing your fish. You're gonna slice it the size that you desire. On my alligator guard, I do not like to cut it too thick, but I don't like it super thin. We're gonna do it just um, just regular as I would say it, but I'll show you so you can see how it looks. So don't bother trying to use um, egg or milk or anything to kind of um, wash your guard or you know coat your guard, you don't need to. All you need to do is slice your guard in the pieces that you desire and put it straight in here and it's gonna give it a nice coating. After we cut, after we cut and we coat all the guard with the breading mix, we're gonna place it here. So we're gonna separate every single piece of, um, of fish. We're gonna separate it, we're gonna put it here and I'm gonna stick it in the freezer I'm gonna stick it in the freezer so it can kind of harden up a little bit. You can even freeze it and then you put it in bags later if you wanna freeze and cook um, fish later. So you can prepare all your fish, separate it on a baking pan and um, freeze it. You're gonna freeze it and then you can put it in little baggies. So you know you know what, I'm gonna take out the little baggie today and I'm gonna fry it. And you can fry it straight into the fryer, frozen. But we're gonna leave it in there for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. Maybe even more, like that gives me time to to go and prepare everything else I need to prepare, my sides, my oil, my fire, everything though, because we're gonna be using a, a burner. We're gonna be using a propane burner. We're gonna be using a nice um, a nice pan that we use to fry up fish. And we're using peanut oil. Peanut oil is the best to fry fish. So we're gonna coat our guard. We're gonna put it in the baking pan. We're gonna put it in the freezer about 15, 20, maybe a little more and then we're gonna go and fry it, all right? So I just thought you would know that. It's a nice tip, you know, if you wanna freeze your guard, completely freeze it, and then you put it in your bags, and then you put it back in the freezer. Reason is you wanna completely freeze it is because if you just start coating all your guard, and you put it all in one bag, and then you put it in the freezer without pre-freezing it, it's gonna stick all together. You don't want that. You want it to be frozen individually. Once it's frozen, then you distribute it in your bags and then you freeze it like that. You can easily take out piece by piece without them getting stuck together. I thought that would be a good tip for you all. I use it all the time. I do it all the time whenever I, I do leftover fish and stuff like that so I can have it ready to fry. All right, so let's get to the next step, everybody. Okay, everyone, so 
we are proceeding to the next step and the next step is cutting our fish you're gonna cut it like I like I mentioned before you you don't want it too thick you don't want it too thin but that's my personal preference you can cut it thick or thin however you desire if you want uh, popcorn piece look looking pieces or nuggets or however you like I like to have long thin pieces not too thin though but I'm gonna show you so this is the katan this is the meat that we're gonna be cutting so we're gonna start now instead of cutting against the grain we're gonna cut with the grain now you see the grains running like this it's not actually you know up and down but it's kind of going this way so I consider this cutting with the grain so as you see this is the end of my fillet and I'm gonna start slicing it to my desired preference okay now let me show you that's a perfect cut for me right there so we're gonna cut it and we're gonna place it here on the side because we are going to braid it right now. We're gonna place it right here on the side. Now let's finish cutting it. You see, that's the way we love it here. We're gonna keep on cutting. And there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm slicing it first and then I'll start um, coating it with the seafood uh, breading mix as, as after I'm done cutting all the pieces of alligator gar. Now, alligator gar is a very delicious uh, fish to eat. If you have not tried it, I highly suggest you try alligator gar. I promise you, you will like it, but make sure whoever cooks it for you knows what they're doing because um, I think they would know exactly the best way for it to be cooked. But if you're not experienced in cooking alligator gar, that's what this video is for. You can try it on your own. If you follow these simple steps, I promise you, you will love it. And it'll be one of your newest favorite fish to eat. Okay. So we're almost done here, slicing it. Remember, you don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. Now. Let me just show you what you can do. If you don't like it in, in long strips like this, then just cut it in half and you have smaller strips like this. And that works too. You know, it works too, whatever you, you, you rather have. So we'll leave these and cut it in those smaller strips to show you all what it looks like. And um, we can go ahead and fry it like that too. So there's nothing wrong with that. There is no wrong or right way on how to cut your fish. All right, so these are my pieces, everyone. We're gonna start adding the braiding to it. These are the smaller pieces right here, the smaller pieces. These are the longer pieces. These are the ones that I prefer. It's It doesn't make a difference. It's just that, you know, it's a nice longer piece. I like the presentation of how it comes out. It comes out like a, like, um, a chicken strip type of deal. So anyway, so that's the cutting. Now we're going to coat it. We have our, our our sheet here. We have our mix, our our homemade breading mix. And I'm gonna coat a couple pieces because remember the other pieces that I'm gonna be doing um, coating with is I'm going to uh, add some pepper flakes. Anyway, remember you wanna make sure you coat it completely. If you wanna pound it down, you pound it down so it can coat it more. And then you just shake shake the excess breading mix off and then you place it in your baking sheet which you do to one you do to all so we're gonna go ahead and finish coating some without pepper flakes and the rest we're gonna do it with pepper flakes everybody so um stay tuned right everyone so we did some some um some coating with the original mix this original mix does not have pepper flakes. This is from my daughter right here. She doesn't uh, like to eat spicy. So for us adults, we're gonna add a little bit of pepper flakes. You put what you desire. You don't have to put exactly what I tell you. This is on your preference. You like it spicy, you add more. You like it less spicy, you add less. So we're probably gonna add about maybe two teaspoons or so. And this is gonna give it that extra kick. We love it. It's gonna give it that extra kick and it's gonna be super delicious. If you love spicy stuff, this is an excellent mix. 
So I'm not using my wicks, but we'll use our hands to get it to get it going. So we're gonna finish coating all of them. And uh, there you have it. This is with uh, pepper flakes. Remember, you shake off the excess breading mix and we'll put it on this side so we do not mix it up. And stay tuned so we can finish. All right, everyone, so we finished braiding and coating all of our fish. These three pieces are the ones without pepper flakes. Everything else has pepper flakes. So what's separating is the small pieces so we do not get confused and we know which fish is fish. So we finished braiding the fish. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna add it in the freezer. The reason is because we have um, other prep to do, other preparation to do. We have our sides, everything. So we're gonna add it to the freezer. It's gonna allow it to harden up. It's gonna allow that, that um, braiding to kind of um, harden up in there so it's not too loose and all that good stuff. So we're gonna add it in the freezer. And once I'm done prepping, once I'm done prepping the rest of the food, we are going to start cooking the alligator guard. I will show you right now when it's when it comes out. But um, I just want to share with you all about the size. You can accompany this fish with any size you want. I am not going to get into cooking any sides because you can use whatever. A lot of people like using french fries, a lot of people like using chips, a lot of people love using um, vegetables and rice and it's endless possibilities or endless I'm sorry endless options of what you can use for this dish as a side personally we're going to be cooking a uh, stir fry red cabbage with um, I believe it's going to be red cabbage it's going to be onion it's going to have um, carrot and broccoli so it's going to be broccoli carrot onion red cabbage and it's gonna be a stir fry. That stir fry is gonna be our side because we love veggies, so we're trying to be a little creative with what we can, what we can do. And since um, yesterday, I have a farmer friend that gave us this red cabbage, so I decided to do a little something with this cabbage, and we're gonna use it as one of our sides. Our second side is going to be a garlic, butter, and herb rice, white rice, I should say. And we're gonna have the fish, and then we're gonna have a little, of, a little bit of uh, guacamole. All right. So we're gonna give it some time in the freezer. When we take it out, it's gonna be ready to fry. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna let it harden up, nice. And then uh, once I'm done prepping my sides and everything, we're gonna get to the frying process. So, okay. So I finished prepping all my sides. The oil is preheating, and we are ready to fry the alligator guard. Now, before I get the alligator guard out of the out of the freezer, I just want to show you the sides that are going to accompany my dish. If you want to show, this is um, this is a red cabbage, onion, carrot, and broccoli stir fry. All right, check out those beautiful colors, everybody. This is a stir fry, and this is going to be the veggies that are going along with the dish, and of course. We have our garlic herby white rice, okay? So let's get the, the gar out of the freezer. We got it out of the freezer. Remember these three do not have pepper flakes. The rest of it has pepper flakes and we're gonna stick it straight into the oil. All right guys, so follow us to the oil. All right, so there's our, our propane burner and our frying pan with our peanut oil getting nice and hot for us and here's our katan our alligator guard ready to go in there all right so we'll let it get a little hot and then we'll all right everybody it. so we finally finished uh getting our oil prepared our sides are done they're super delicious i just tried my uh signature side my red cabbage stir fry anyway this is the katan the oil is ready we're gonna start to fry it we're gonna start to fry these strips, these katan strips. This is all the, these are the strips that have no pepper flakes. This is gonna be for my daughter. So we're gonna let these three cook for a little bit. We're gonna show you how it does it. Now, I mean, how it cooks. Anyway, you may ask yourself, or you, you may ask, hey, so how do we know if the alligator gar is ready? The best advice I can give you is do not do not cook the oil so hot because you're gonna burn your bread and you do not want that. You don't want it too low either. You want it to just be perfect, just right. If you see that your gar is overcooking super fast, your oil is too hot. 
If you see that your oil is turning brown, your oil is too hot. Anyway, um, but don't panic, you know, don't panic. Try your best, but um, by the time that your fish is golden brown, that is when you know it's perfectly ready. You don't want to overcook it and you don't want to undercook it. Golden brown is the key. So let's wait for it to turn golden brown. Now, as you can see, it's frying. It's frying right here. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So that alligator car is frying and we're not gonna bother it. We're not gonna move it. We're not going to be messing with it. We're going to give it a little bit of time until we might think it'd be ready. And we want it golden brown, but we don't want to mess with it too much, everybody. But this is how it's coming out, look. You see that? So we just gotta wait for it to get golden brown and it's gonna come out delicious. So, I will show you the finished product in one moment as soon as it's done. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. So our alligator guard is ready. We gave it about a good two minutes. Two minutes is what it took because it's not too thick. And look at the finished product. Look at that. Look at that, everyone. So we're gonna put it in our in our plate so it can uh, drip the oil, the excess oil. And we're gonna finish cooking the rest of the gar. We're gonna finish cooking the rest of the gar and then we are going to uh, make our plates and we're gonna uh, enjoy. So I will show you the finished product of our plate. All right, everybody, check it out one more time. That is it. So all of our alligator gar is done. Our fried catan, our chicharron, whatever you want to call it, it's done. Look at those beautiful pieces. They are done. So I hope you enjoyed the video for today. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button, everyone, because I will be having some more delicious stuff coming your way. Anyway, I'm going to show you one more clip after this one of uh, our final meal preparation, the whole kabang. All right, guys, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and let's eat.